Today, we're going to talk about the truth behind protein. How much should you be intaking per day for longevity? Most people think about protein in terms of muscle, muscle building, recovery, gym goals. And while that's of course important, it's just one narrow slice of the picture because protein doesn't just build our body, it also shapes how fast we age. The science is nuanced and the paradox is real. Too little protein can leave you frail. Too much can activate pro-aging pathways. So how do we strike the right balance? Not just to build, but to last. Today, we're going to explore protein through the lens of longevity science real data, and practical frameworks you can apply to your life depending on your age, lifestyle, and goals. The research tells us something counterintuitive. Protein's impact on mortality flips with age. In your 50s, a high protein diet may correlate with increased risk of cancer and all-cause mortality. But after 65, the same level of protein becomes protective. In a landmark 18-year study from Levine, individuals aged 50 to 65 with high protein intake had a 75% increase in overall mortality and four times increase in cancer deaths. But those over 65, higher protein correlated with lower mortality. Now you might have noticed I emphasized the word may. This is because correlation found in this study does not necessarily mean causation. But as we'll explore, the outcomes from the study do align with animal studies. What I described is the protein paradox, and it comes down to signaling pathways like IGF-1 and mTOR. These are the central switches. In youth and midlife, suppressing these signals may reduce cancer risk and slow aging. But in older adults, we want to preserve lean mass immune function and physical resilience. That requires protein. So it's not about high versus low protein in isolation. It's about when and in what context. The current RDA for protein is about 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. That's 0.36 grams per pound. But that's a baseline for deficiency prevention, not optimization. For longevity, especially in older adults, that's not enough. Active adults or those in midlife, 0.55 to 0.75 grams per pound is a better target. For those over 55, 0.7 grams per pound becomes essential, especially if you want to prevent sarcopenia and preserve independence. We'll talk about athletes in a little bit. These numbers are total per day, but protein distribution matters. Older muscle needs more per meal to activate synthesis, about 30 grams of protein with two and a half grams of leucine the amino acid. So yes, total protein matters, but so does timing and amino acid profile. Not all protein is created equal, and that matters for both health and longevity. Let's start with leucine. Leucine is the key trigger for muscle protein synthesis through mTOR activation. Animal proteins like whey and eggs are high in leucine. That's great for building muscle, but it also means they stimulate mTOR more aggressively. On the flip side, plant proteins tend to have lower leucine and methionine, another amino acid. That's one reason why plant-based diets are associated with lower IGF-1 and potentially longer lifespan. But lower mTOR activation also means you might need more total grams of plant protein to get the same anabolic effect. So here's the play. If you're younger or midlife and not highly active, favoring plant proteins may help reduce chronic activation of growth pathways. But if you're older or training hard, you want a more anabolic mix or smart combinations. And then there's methionine, as I briefly mentioned. It's found heavily in red meat and eggs. Methionine, it's essential, but excess levels chronically stimulate mTOR and reduce stress resilience. In mice, methionine restriction extends lifespan. The good news, plant-based diets tend to naturally limit methionine. And even if you eat meat, you can buffer methionine with glycine. Glycine acts as a methyl buffer. It also stimulates autophagy. It supports the production of the endogenous antioxidant glutathione, and it reduces inflammation. High glycine diets or supplements like collagen or Novo's Core can offset some of the downsides of high methionine intake. So if you're carnivore or just eating lots of animal protein, consider balancing it with glycine-rich foods, bone broth, gelatin, collagen powder, and let's not forget isoleucine, another branch chain amino acid like leucine. In a recent 2023 study, mice fed a diet with a significant reduction in isoleucine lived longer, especially males who saw up to a 33% increase in lifespan. This suggests that excessive isoleucine may also chronically activate growth pathways like mTOR or disrupt metabolic balance. While isoleucine is essential and found in all complete proteins, the study adds to growing evidence that specific amino acid restriction, not just overall protein intake, may play a role in slowing aging. 
On that note, we need to talk about mTOR. It's the central switchboard that links nutrition to cellular aging. When mTOR is on, we grow, we build. That's good, until it's not. Over time, constant mTOR activation can suppress autophagy, the process by which your cells clean up damage. Low autophagy equals faster aging. So what turns mTOR on? Primarily amino acids, especially methionine, leucine, and isoleucine. And the hormone IGF-1, which rises with high protein diets and from growth hormone. The more protein you eat, especially in absence of fasting or exercise, the more you're leaning into growth mode. The longevity play is not to shut off mTOR, but to cycle it, to give your body periods of growth and periods of cleanup. That means resistance training plus protein for targeted mTOR activation in muscle, overnight fasting for systemic mTOR suppression and autophagy boost, occasional low protein days or extended fasts for a cellular reset. This rhythmic approach to mTOR mirrors ancestral eating patterns. Feast, fast, rebuild, repair. If you're young, healthy, and sedentary, Consider reducing protein a couple days per week. If you're older or training intensely, you need more anabolic support. Just make sure you're also giving your cells time to repair. Particularly if you're younger, have plenty of muscle mass, and are cleared by your doctor, consider integrating some 24-hour or longer fasts. I do 40 to 72 hour fast once every few months. Exercises changes the game. Protein needs aren't static, they rise with activity. Strength training, endurance work, recovery, all of that requires protein for repair and adaptation. Resistance trained adults generally see best results around 1.6 to 2 grams per kilogram or 0.73 to 0.9 grams per pound per day. That's where hypertrophy peaks. Beyond that, there are diminishing returns. I personally maintain about 0.75 grams per pound per day, but I don't carefully count. It's an approximation. I focus on the minimum effective dose to balance longevity with muscle gain, and 0.75 is the sweet spot for me. What about if you're cutting calories or older? Higher protein, up to 2.2 grams per kilogram or one gram per pound, helps preserve lean mass. Endurance athletes need less, but still above the RDA around 1.2 to 1.6 grams per kilogram or 0.55 to 0.75 grams per pound, depending on volume and intensity, especially if they're older, vegan, or training long hours. How about sex differences? It's not huge when normalized for lean body mass. The bigger gap is age and activity. Older women especially tend to under eat protein. That's a big problem. Muscle loss, immune dysfunction, poor healing, even mood disturbances, all can follow a low protein diet. Make sure each meal you eat hits the anabolic threshold, especially breakfast. Many people eat say 10 grams of protein in the morning, 50 grams at dinner. That's not optimal. Try to split it 30 and 30. So how do we apply all of this? Here's a practical longevity aligned protein blueprint. First, adjust for age and goals. If you're under 65, healthy, and not training intensely, 0.8 to 1.2 grams per kilogram per day or 0.36 to 0.75 per pound is enough. If you're over 65 or training regularly, 1.2 to 1.8 grams per kilogram or 0.55 to 0.82 per pound is more appropriate. If you're in a caloric deficit, you can go up to one gram per pound, but when it comes to longevity, think of protein as minimum effective dose to maintain muscle, not maximum protein intake. Next, if you're consuming predominantly animal proteins, use collagen, gelatin, or glycine, which you can find in Novo's core, to buffer the methionine. If you opt for plant proteins that are low in methionine and moderate in leucine and isoleucine, make sure you combine different forms of plant proteins for complete amino acid profiles. Balance mTOR with autophagy. Use overnight fasts, 12 to 18 hours as your baseline. Occasionally skip protein and heavy meals. Consider periodic low protein days once per week or during fasting mimicking or prolonged fasts. Supplement where needed. I mentioned glycine a moment ago, three to five grams per day if your diet is high in meat. If you're vegan or vegetarian, consider supplementing with creatine and B12. Actually, forget that. Everyone should consider creatine. Just take more if you don't eat meat. Your protein needs will evolve as you age and as your goals change. What works at 25 won't serve you the same at 65. The key is to cycle wisely, prioritize function, not just metrics, and feed your biology with the right inputs at the right time. Protein isn't good or bad, it's powerful. And like anything powerful, it needs context. Eat to match your activity level and phase of life. If you're older, 
protein is essential for maintaining muscle mass. And while protein is still essential when you're young, a minimum effective dose approach that's matched to your physical activity, interspersed with periods of protein restriction or fasting, is probably best to remain biologically younger for longer. So thanks for sticking with me. If this added value, share it. Subscribe if you want more content like this. And let me know what topics you want deep dives on next. So until next time, stay strong, stay curious, and slow your age.